Picture this, you're working on an Excel spreadsheet, juggling countless data entries and constantly battling errors from inconsistent inputs. Frustrated with messy lists and endless sorting? Well, what if you could create smart, dynamic drop-down lists that not only streamline your data entry, but also ensure accuracy and efficiency? In this video, we're diving deep into Excel's data verification feature to show you how to build intelligent drop-down lists that adapt to your needs. Whether you're managing inventories, tracking projects, or organizing information, these techniques will transform your spreadsheets into powerful, error-free tools. Say goodbye to data chaos and discover how to make Excel work smarter, not harder. Okay, so this is actually a very straightforward process. Okay, so here we have a very simple Excel document. We have a small table of information and basically we're going to ask people to populate this with information. We don't want them to misspell something like an application name or maybe they incorrectly put in Tuesday rather than Wednesday. It's going to create some problems for us to have to clean that data later. So what we want to do is we want to give people the ability to basically select all the correct information, the correct spellings and the correct app names or the correct days of the week from drop down menus but we also want to hold control over those drop down menus so that if we change them and adapt them uh, you know in the actual lookup arrays then you know that's automatically going to be pulled through to the input sheet this one here so in order to do that you can see that we have drop down menus already in place here and um, these are static ones so if I come on over to the data tab go over to data validation go down to the data validation here you can see that this is just looking up a lookup array right here okay it's basically lookup which is k7 to k11 right and that basically means that if i add something at k12 it's not automatically going to be included in my drop down menu and that's what we need to change we want dynamic drop down menus not static ones so in order to do that what we need to do is we need to change some of our data here okay so specifically within the data validation so inside here we want to essentially put in a um, table name right but we can't use a table name directly so let's head on over to our lookups tab here so in here we already can see that if we wanted to reference let's go ahead and just equals uh, this entire table right here you can see that it comes up as app and then in brackets we have the name app okay that is basically our table i'm going to copy that okay and we're going to try and put that into our lookup array right so we're using a table for our lookups and we want to do that uh, drop that table reference into our lookups for our drop down menu so if i go to data validation we come into our lookup source here if we go ahead and just put that in it's going to come up with an error the error being that you can't do it right um, now the reason for that is it doesn't like referencing a table with in this area but what you can do is come to the very beginning so just after the equals area type in the word formula in direct okay now in doing so you open up a bracket and then basically put this into quotations and then close that bracket so you have equals in direct open parentheses quotation app in brackets app close bracket you have quotation then you have a close parentheses now if we click OK on this it will now load up and still validate our entire range that means that if I come back into our apps here and I add something else so at the moment we've got word PowerPoint power automate power BI but we haven't got Outlook if I go ahead and put Outlook in here it'll extend our table and if I come over to our lookup array here or our inputs for ideas we can see that Outlook is now added to the bottom okay so let's go ahead and do some more exercises here we want to change these days maybe at the moment we're only doing videos on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays what, if, what happens if later down the line I want to add a Saturday, right? Well, first of all, what we'll do is we'll come over to our lookup table here for the days. This is uh, already something that we can reference. So we'll go equals. We'll go over to our table where we get the black arrow. We'll click that. And you can see in our formula bar, it comes up as equal days in brackets days. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come out of it. I'm going to go over to the ideas area. I'm going to go over to the data tab data validation from any value we're going to click that we're going to click list and then from our list we're going to paste that in this time just after equals we'll again type indirect open up a bracket in quotations we'll put in the days of the table okay then we'll close a parentheses press enter and now our Wednesday has the ability to be a drop down menu okay now this has not expanded all the way down my table so 
All I want to do is I want to select that first cell with my drop down menu and I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to come over to data validation. It's going to notice that our table is um, basically only got one cell with a drop down menu and it says, do you want to extend? I'm going to click yes and I'm going to click OK. And now all of these will be in that reference. So if I come back to my lookups table here and I go ahead and add something like Sunday to the end of my list, I can go back to my ideas and our drop down menu now includes Sunday. Perfect. Let's go ahead and do the same thing one more time for the location of our table here. So we're going to go over to our lookups. We're going to go find our location table here. We're going to go equals somewhere randomly and get that black arrow to highlight the entire table. OK, we're going to highlight this. We're going to copy it. OK, so it's basically equals location in brackets location. We'll come over to the ideas. We'll come to this first cell that's blank at the moment. Data validation. We're going to go from any value to list. From here, we're going to paste in the look uh, the table uh, reference, which is lookups and uh, so it is uh, location uh, location. Okay, in here at the beginning, we're going to type in indirect. Open up a bracket quotations at the end quotations close parentheses and okay. Again, because this hasn't expanded all the way down, we're going to highlight everything. Data validation. We'll get this pop up message. We'll click yes. We'll click OK. And now all of those locations are also in here. So it is actually a very quite simple once you kind of know how. Now, obviously, I have done videos on indirect formula before. If you're not all familiar with it, go ahead and check out the channel. And if you have found this tutorial useful and informative, smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, subscribe. And if you haven't done so already, guys, check out that video right there. It's one you don't want to miss.